Hello everyone and welcome. Today we will be discussing about motorcycle suspensions. We will start with understanding the basics, why suspensions are important, how it works. Then we will learn about some common terms related to motorcycle suspensions. After that we will understand the basics of suspension geometry. Before getting started, I invite you to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so that you never miss any updates. Now without spending much time, let's get started. Imagine you are carrying a glass of water and walking on a bumpy road. If your hands are stiff, the water will spill out with every bump. But if your hands are flexible and move with the road, the glass stays steady. That's what suspension does for your bike. It absorbs the movement of the road so that the rider and the bike stay balanced and controlled. It makes the ride smooth over potholes, speed breakers and rough roads and help the tire to stay on ground, which is super important. But why? Let's say you're riding your bike without proper suspensions. The wheel might lift off the ground for a split of a second. At that moment, your tire has zero grip. No grip means you can't brake properly, can't steer accurately and definitely can't control your bike well. Imagine trying to stop your bike when the wheels are in the air. You can press the brake but the bike won't respond until the wheel touch back down. Especially during turning and braking, you need your tires to stick to the road as much as possible that grip what makes your bike stable. Here, suspension plays a big role. It helps your tire to maintain the grip even over potholes and uneven surfaces. That means better handling, safer braking and more confidence while driving. Now let's learn about the basic working principle of motorcycle suspension. We will start from scratch. This is your motorcycle frame and right now it is not connected to tires and suspension. If you try to ride it like this, well, that's impossible to ride because there is no way to roll and handle the bumps. Okay, now let's add the tire. Now the bike can move, but here's the problem. The bike is directly connected to the frame. That means every bump, potholes and speed breaker you are going to hit your spine is going to feel it. No control, no comfort. And as we discussed, your tires will bounce off the road, which means no grip, making it hard to turn and brake properly. Now we will add the front suspension. Most bike uses telescopic folk in the front suspension. It's basically two tubes that slide into each other like a telescope. Inside this telescope, we have the spring that controls the shock and oil, which control how fast it moves. Now what does the spring do? A spring is a compressed coil which absorbs the energy when you hit the bump and tries to return to its original shape. It's what that gives you the soft cushioning effect. But if you only have the spring, the bike will be keep bouncing up and down like a pogo stick. And that's where the damper comes in. A damper usually filled with oil and gas controls the speed of spring movement. It slows down the compression and rebound so that your bike doesn't bounce at every bump. Now you will often hear about two terms, compression and rebound. Think of it like jumping on a springy mattress. When you land, that's compression. When it pushes you back, that's rebound. In short, in any suspension system, the spring takes the hit and damper controls the bounce. Now let's move to the rear of the bike. The first component which we add here is the swing arm. The swing arm is the component which connects the rear wheel to the bike frame. It has a pivot here which helps the wheel to move up and down over a bump and that's why it is called a swing arm. Now we will add the rear suspension unit which includes spring and damper. The spring supports the weight of the rider and absorbs the shock when the rear wheel moves. The damper usually filled with oil and gas controls the spring movement so that it doesn't bounce uncontrollably. Spring and damper together absorbs the bump and controls the motion so that you get safer and smoother ride. Now different bikes have different suspension setup. Some has twin shock absorber, one on each side which you will often see in commuter and classic bikes. Others, especially performance bike, uses a single monoshock mounted at the center. Twin shock and monoshock both do the same job of absorbing the shock and keeping your tire planted to the ground, but the design changes on the basis of bike purpose and weight distribution. Now that we have understood how suspension works, let's go over some basic terms that you will often hear while discussing about motorcycle suspension. These are commonly used terms which are used by mechanics, in spec sheets and among bike enthusiasts and understanding these terms can really help you to understand your bike better. So number one is the suspension travel. This means how much your suspension can move up and down. It is usually measured in millimeters. More suspension travel is better for off-roads and rough roads and less travel make the suspension stiffer which provides better control on smooth roads. For example, dirt bikes have more suspension travel compared to sports bike. Now number two is the preload. Preload means how much the spring is already compressed before the bike hits the bump. It's like the bike is just standing still. It is used to adjust the suspension for extra weight like a heavier rider, a passenger or the luggage. If you increase the preload, the spring gets tighter, the bike sits a bit higher and the ride feels stiffer. If you decrease the preload, the spring gets looser, the bike sits lower 
and the ride feels more softer and comfortable. Also, preload doesn't change how hard the spring is, it just changes when the spring starts moving. Basically, the spring only reacts with the bump after a certain amount of pressure is applied. So when you increase the preload, you are already pressing the spring down a bit. That means that small bump will not compress it more because it's already tight. And the spring will only start moving when a bigger force is applied on it, like a heavier weight or a deeper pothole. Now number 3 is the damping. This is the control over how fast the suspension compresses and rebounds. It's done by damper using oil and gas. Too little damping makes the bouncy ride. Too much damping makes the stiffer ride. Now in damping, we have compression damping and rebound damping. Compression damping controls how fast the suspension compresses when you hit the bump. More compression damping makes the firmer ride and less compression damping makes the softer ride. On the other hand, rebound damping controls how fast the suspension comes back after you hit the bump. If the rebound is too fast, the bike will feel bouncy and if the rebound is too slow, the bike will feel sluggish. Now the next term is the sag. Sag is how much the suspension compresses due to rider's weight even before hitting the bump. Setting a correct sag is important for making the suspension to work properly. Too much sag can lead to bottoming out and too little sag will reduce the grip and comfort. Now let's talk about suspension geometry. It sounds technical but it simply means how suspension parts are positioned and angled along the bike. These angles and points decide how your bike behaves how it turns, how stable it feels and how it responds to bump. So number one is the rake angle, also called caster angle. This is the angle of the front fork or the steering axis with the vertical line when you look at your bike from the side. Imagine drawing a straight line down through a front suspension. The rake is how much the line tilts backward. Most street bikes have a rake angle between 25 to 30 degree. A larger rake angle gives your bike stability at high speed but it feels heavier to turn. A smaller rake angle makes the steering quick and more responsive but it may feel unstable at high speeds. Now the next term is the trail. This is the distance between two points on the ground, where the front suspension line actually touches the ground and where the tire actually touches the ground. Trail depends upon rake angle and front wheel size. It acts like a lever to keep the front wheel stable and helps it to return to straight after a turn. Think of it like a gap between the steering pivot and the tire's contact point. More trail makes the bike stable and smooth, especially in straight line riding. On the other hand, less trail makes the bike to turn faster, but it may feel unstable at high speed. Now the next term is the wheelbase. Wheelbase is the distance between the front and rear wheels from axle to axle. A larger wheelbase gives bike a stable and comfortable ride. A shorter wheelbase makes the bike more agile and easier to handle, especially in tight corners. Now the next term is the swing arm angle. Swing arm angle is the angle between the swing arm and the ground when the bike is at the rest. It affects how the rear suspension reacts under acceleration and braking. A correct swing arm angle helps the rear tire to stay in contact with the ground, improving the grip and control. If the angle is wrong, too steep or too flat, the rear tire may lose traction under hard braking and acceleration. So this is all about the basics of motorcycle suspension. Till now we have learned why suspensions are important, how it works, common terms related to motorcycle suspensions. We have understood about the basics of suspension geometry. Thanks for watching. If you find the video useful, do like it, share it with your friends and colleagues. Also, if you are new to my channel, do subscribe. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring.